So welcome to our uh, Para Youth webinar entitled Visit Thailand Year 1987, Echoes of Innovation Shaping Tomorrow's Journeys, partnered with Para Thailand Chapter, of course. Today's webinar is in collaboration with Bangkok University International, Dusitani College, International College for Sustainability Studies, and Department of Tourism and Hospitality Management of Dhaka University. I'm sure that everyone is very excited to jump to the lessons uh, that we'll be taking away from the session, but let me quickly introduce our speakers and do some housekeeping announcements before we move on to the actual session. So um, I, I also strongly encourage all of you guys to stay for the whole webinar for the insights, but also for exclusive PADA Youth Sponsorship opportunity to attend PADA Annual Summit 2024 and the PADA Youth Symposium happening alongside the PADA Annual Summit. So moving on today, we are joined by uh, our special guest speakers. So uh, first, of course, uh, MTS Mukbil, Executive Editor of Travel Impact Newswire, uh, Pichaya Sai Seng Chan, Director of um, the Americas, the Middle East, and Africa of Tourism Authority of Thailand. And of course, last but not least, Bet Montgomery, Chairperson of Para Thailand Chapter. Today's webinar is a 75-minute session full of learnings with special lecture and panel discussions of current industry leaders on the national campaign, Visit Thailand Year 1987. So before we go on, allow me to do some housekeeping announcements. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, please use the Q&A function as you can see on screen on the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you have any questions for our guest panelists, again, uh, please use the Q&A function on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Please do not ask any questions in the chat because the chat function is there for you to introduce yourself to the group and I see that a lot of you guys are sending good afternoons. Uh, you guys are doing great, but I hope you guys can add maybe a quick introduction, brief introduction about yourselves right next to good afternoon. So for me, it would be good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nick from Pada. So uh, let's say if you're from Bangkok University, just say good afternoon. I am uh, this, this person from Bangkok University so that they will know you by name and uh, they will know where you're from instead of you know getting greetings from you. So um, and so that the guest speakers and panelists would know you by name as well. Uh, so yeah. And um, another reminder is that we are live streaming this webinar on our Facebook page, Pada Headquarters Facebook page. Um, and for those who are not able to join, uh, if you know anyone who's not able to join the session because of the audience limit capacity of our Zoom, which is at 1000 because we're reaching 600 as of the moment. So um, if you know anyone who couldn't join Zoom, please lead them to the live stream that we're doing on Para Headquarters Facebook page. Next slide, please. To officially start the program, please allow me to invite Mr. Noor Ahmad Hamid, uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Pacific Asia Travel Association on screen for his opening remarks for this uh, particular webinar. Uh, Noor? Please. Uh, thank you, Nick. Um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Uh, greetings from uh, Papa Head Office in Bangkok. Uh, Sawadee to all of you. Um, firstly, I'd like to welcome uh, our esteemed presenter, uh, Brother Kung, Brother Impias, uh, and also panelists, uh, Kun Ben and so Kun Pichaya uh, uh, from Sentara and also Pata Thailand Chapter and so Kun Pichaya from PAT. Uh, thank you for your time for being with us uh, today. Uh, I also would like to welcome all viewers uh, from far and near, including attendees. I was being told uh, that uh, coming from universities and colleges from Thailand to Vietnam, Bangladesh to Philippines, Indonesia to India, Malaysia to United Kingdom. Uh, and I'm so happy to see that uh, the, the login of the participant has uh, gone more than 700. So we are uh, in the making of a history here as well, in terms of number of attendees. Uh, so welcome to all of you. Um, in welcoming all of you, I would like to quote uh, what MTS has posted on his LinkedIn, which I saw yesterday. He said, uh, Wobatin, visit Thailand year 1987 
was much more than just a tourism campaign. So what is actually the so much more? Uh, why a tourism year of a destination like Thailand is so important that we're having this conversation today? I'm sure all of this and more will be answered shortly uh, from the presentation of Brother Impias. Um, but what I wanted to say for now is that all that you will hear from Brother Imtiaz shortly are facts and not myths or folklore. These are important accounts which are part of our uh, growth of the global tourism history that has paved ways for many destinations around the world after what Thailand has done to also proclaim their destination tourism year. So this is why it is so important, especially for our viewers from universities and colleges and also all Pata members and, and friends from the industry, you should take note that this presentation, not because there will be an exam for you, especially for the students, but this but learning from the past is super important for us to build our future. I myself can't wait to hear uh, Brother Impia's his storytelling. Um, so I will not take long. I already welcome all of you. I thank Imtiaz, uh, Kunban, and Pichaya to be part of this uh, presentation. And I will pass back to Nick. And I want to sit back and relax and enjoy the presentation by Brother Imtiaz. Thank you. Thank you so much, Noor, uh, for the warm welcome to all of our audiences. And for all the audiences, um, I know you will miss Noor, but um, he'll be moderating for the panel discussion as well after the guest lecture. So he'll be back on screen soon. So uh, next slide, please. Without further ado, let me invite Kunim Tias, leading travel and tourism journalist and historian on screen as he'll be sharing with us a guest lecture on Visit Thailand Year 1987. So Kunim Tias, please take it away. Thank you, Nick. <clears throat> um, okay, thank you very much indeed, uh, Noor, for that wonderful welcome. And thanks to all the speakers here who are joining me here today. And can everybody see the screen and hear me okay? Nick, can you hear the, can you see Not this? And, clear. and the screen is okay? The slides presentation is up? Uh, Ni, can you unshare so we can see Queen Imtiaz's uh, slide? Yep, we can see the screen now. Okay, great. Okay, so Sawadi um, good afternoon. Mabuhai to my friends in the Philippines. Sin chao to my friends in Vietnam. Uh, namaskar to my friends in India. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to all my friends in Indonesia uh, and the Islamic world. Uh, let me just move on. Okay, so first things first, uh, uh, I want to just extend my thanks personally to Kun Ben uh, Montgomery, the, the chairman of the chairperson of the part of Thailand chapter and part of CEO uh, Kunnoor for inviting me here today. And personally also to Nick for setting up all the background work and the entire Pata team who have played a, such an important role in uh, bringing this together today. So um, one opening uh, remark, if you don't mind, as there's a lot of academic community here, I just would like everybody to kindly note that I would like the integrity of the intellectual property of this presentation to be very carefully noted. Uh, please do not plagiarize the material. Uh, it is going to be used widely, uh, 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 publicly open. But if you do use it in any way, please make sure that you do give credit, do give full credit for everything that you hear uh, and re and get in terms of the free research today. Now, I just want to give you some context and background uh, to what you're going to be seeing today. Now, I'm basically a proud citizen of Thailand. Uh, I have been living here since 1978. And I have been reporting on the Thai travel and tourism industry since 1981. Uh, I am the second longest serving travel trade journalist in Thailand. And today I'm going to give you an unmatched narrative of how Visit Thailand Year made Thailand the greatest, what I call the greatest story in global tourism history. Now, my mission today is really to in several fold. One is I want to recognize the hard work of the veterans of that era. Uh, they had some very great, uh, Thailand had some wonderful leaders in the travel and tourism industry. And it's very important that today's generation recognizes who they were and what they did. I also want to leave a better world for our families and future generations like many of the students who are here today. Uh, I want to upgrade the quality of discourse and debate in the travel and tourism industry into new era. 
basically you will find today i am going to help uh, completely redefine the meaning of sustainability uh, as we go forward because many of the things that we are seeing uh, happening today in terms of defining the sustainability agenda were already done 40 years ago we are today just actually doing nothing more than reinventing the wheel uh, but th there's a lot of duplication which i think we can learn from the lessons of history on that uh, i also want the people of thailand expatriates and young generation here to know uh, to know and respect and the knowledge the value of the thai, of of the history of thai tourism uh, as, as, as I mentioned earlier on, this was more than just a tourism campaign. It had, it had a nation building impact. And it's something that we need to, we, we need to learn from. Uh, it is really a tragedy today that there is not a single university in this country that has a proper course on the Thai, ASEAN or Asia Pacific tourism history. But I'm looking forward to finding ways by which we can work with some of the universities uh, to changing that as we go forward. Now, um, there's a lot of talk these days about storytelling. Uh, and I just want to tell you the difference between somebody who tells stories and somebody like me who tells his stories. Now, a story will a storyteller will tell you what you want to hear. Basically, a storyteller is a fairy tale, which means, you know, in like in the old ways, the prince and the princess, they, they meet they, once upon a time, and there is always a happy ending where they live happily ever after. But in history, what you, I, I will tell you what you need to hear, which is sometimes there is not necessarily a happy ending where you have a once upon a time, but you also sometimes need to be very careful about not just wanting to hear, but also needing to hear certain things. And that is only done when you're, when you're hearing the story of history. Um, why do I call Thailand the greatest story in global tourism history? Now, here's a little bit of background. The tourism industry in Thailand basically has got four phases. The one, if you see this chart, excuse me, if you see this chart, uh, one is the pre-1987 phase, which I call the very early formative areas. The one, the second part comes after 1987, uh, when the post-1987 era started, the growth started taking place. And the third phase takes place after 2009, when the mass markets emerge, China, India, Russia, and it became really a mass market tourism generation, uh, tourism industry uh, after 2009. The fourth phase, of course, is after what happened COVID, but we won't be going, to, uh, going into that era today. What I am going to be doing is helping you understand that why this phase between, two th between 1987 to 2009 is so important as we redevelop our industry for the post-COVID era. Now, this growth in the tri industry has actually been achieved in spite of the fact that Thailand has been hit by just about every crisis known to mankind. Uh, you can see this list here. Many of you, if you would like to take a screenshot, please go right ahead. I could deliver individual lectures on each of these topics on how, how it, it impacted. And I actually do give separate lectures on crisis management within the tourism industry. So Thailand has actually been able to achieve a lot of that growth in spite of all these various, uh, these, these, uh, these crises. And you can see, uh, we have literally been hit by pandemics, natural disasters, geopolitical problems, economic problems, environmental problems, you name it, anything except snowstorms and avalanches. Uh, and yet, in spite of that, we have been able to reinvent ourselves and come back and bounce back and develop the industry uh, over and over and over again. So it's quite a phenomenal story in that sense, and certainly a lot more important in terms of history. Now, let me take you back to the peak year of the pre COVID era, 2019. Now, these are the figures, just to give you some context as to how important the Thai tourism in industry was uh, and what Thai, Visit Thailand had, which the Thailand year had done for the industry uh, pre-COVID. Now, these are the figures for uh, the pre-COVID era. Now, if you just look at the, we had a total of 40 million, 40 million visitors in 2019, just before the COVID era, uh, before COVID struck. This, uh, if you look at these figures, just the ASEAN countries, the nine, the 10 member of countries of ASEAN, nine excluding Thailand, uh, generated 10 million visitors and China generated 10.5, 10.5 between, between the two regions. So between these two, uh, ASEAN and China, this was generating 50% of the total visitor arrivals to Thailand. Now, if you look at the next one, Japan and Korea, these were generating another about 3.2. Uh, so that takes it to about 35, about uh, uh, 25, uh, 25 million or so, a uh, little bit more than that. And then you have Russia and China, which is another more than a million. So that goes up to nearly about uh, 27, 28 million. 
Uh, so if you see the total, these six countries, India, China, Japan, Korea, uh, uh, and, and the ASEAN region, these one region and five countries were generating about 70 to 75% of the total visitor arrivals coming to Thailand at that time. Now, this is very important because I will then break down the ASEAN region. Of that, those ASEAN region, 4 million of those, uh, of the 10 million, 4 million were coming from neighboring Malaysia. And then you had the new growth areas coming from in, uh, from a country, uh, from uh, uh, from Vietnam, uh, uh, Laos, and, uh, and, sorry, and Singapore. So uh, these figures basically gives you some idea of where this growth was coming from. And you can see it is entirely within the ASEAN and the Asia Pacific region. So how important this became and how overall uh, the importance of how developing inter-regional inter connectivity, connectivity, airlines, roads, transportation systems, uh, the importance that they play, the role that they played in developing the whole concept of Visit ASEAN, uh, Visit Thailand year. Now, how important was th was the was the economic impact? Well, these was these are figures from the last TSA, the Tourism Satellite Account Study, done in two thousand and fifteen. Uh, you can see it had grown the total uh, contribution of uh, tourism to the GDP, as well as the indirect impact was up to eighteen point five, about nineteen nineteen percent of total. Uh, of total impact. Uh, in terms of employment, uh, out of the 38 million visitors, uh, out of the eight, 38 million estimated people who had jobs in, the, in, uh, in 2015, about four, uh, about 4 million, which is about 10%, were working in the travel and tourism industry. So you can see it had a phenomenal economic impact and it was a major job creator uh, by, by, the, by 2015. Now, let me now begin the story of Visit Thailand Year. Now, there are two sides to Thailand. One side basically is all what you hear on the public domain, the, the, the wonderful, the friendliness, the hospitality, the, Thai, you know, the, the, the service-mindedness of the Thai people. But in, in many ways, Thailand is also just like any other country. We have our political problems, social problems, economic problems, uh, environmental issues. And the story of Visit Thailand Year actually begins with a geopolitical crisis within the country. Now, in 1985, as you know, uh, Thailand is one country that has suffered more coups, military coups, than any other country in Asia. Uh, in 1985, we uh, we had a pretty bloody coup. Uh, uh, one, I lost two of my journalist, journalist friends in this coup. Uh, it was, uh, again, a, 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 a quite a, uh, it, I mean, it, it lasted quite a few, uh, a very few tense hours. It was very, it was very, very violent. And it certainly had a very serious impact on the body politic. Now, what the tourism industry did at that time was that we used this to convert a crisis into an opportunity. In 1987, the, the country was going to mark the 60th birthday anniversary, the uh, auspicious, what they call in, in, uh, in, in, in our Asian culture, the fifth cycle, uh, the auspicious fifth cycle anniversary, the 12 year cycle uh, of, our, of, our, uh, 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 of, of life. Now, the king was on his way to becoming the longest reigning monarch in Thai history, and he was also celebrating his uh, his uh, uh, his 60th birthday in 1987. And in 1988, His Majesty was going to become the the longest reigning monarch in in Thai uh, in Thai tourism history. So we had a, a, a double a double opportunity here of combining 1987 and 1988. Uh, into uh, into a, into a double celebration, and that's what we did. And the king, of course, was an extremely respected figure. Uh, he had traveled all over the world in the uh, in the in the early years, so there was a, a mystique and aura. Uh, uh, people knew him all around the world. He was just just a revered, revered figure within the country, uh, but His Majesty had was was very 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 quite well known all around the world. And this was seen as an opportunity to, to move beyond the 1985 crisis and the real damage it had done to the image uh, of Thailand uh, and convert it into a national celebration. So that's what they did. They converted a crisis into an opportunity. And I will tell you a few, a little bit more de about details as to how that actually happened. This was the logo. Uh, for those who have taken screenshots, there's a small explanation there. So I will save time by not giving there, by not going, by not going down that way. Uh, this was a list of the project activities. This manual alone was running was running into about sixty pages. Uh, this was a, a list of the uh, of all the representatives from all over the world, from all over parts of Thailand, the public, private sector, 
uh, an organizing committee was set up. Uh, and I'm proud to tell you that uh, myself and Kun Don Ross, my other colleague from the, from the travel industry, uh, the editor of a very well-known publication, the two longest serving journalists today in Thailand, uh, were, were actually very proud to be on that committee. Uh, we were the only two foreign journalists invited to sit on that. So we were not only reporting on it, but we were actually participating uh, in a lot of the developments. So it was really a celebration, not just a campaign. And I want to take you to some of the amazing advertising slogans, the, the promotional slogans that were uh, that was taken through that time. If this was the, on the left-hand side, you'll see 1987 good reasons to see Thailand this year. This was by Thai International. And on the right, you'll see the, the, the advertising by, by, uh, by, by the Tourism Authority of Thailand. So these are just some of the wonderful uh, uh, the images that, you, that were developed, the collaterals, the brochures, the flyers. Uh, there was the National Tourism Festival, the National Identity. There were floral floats, processions, uh, Mardi Gras. And this was a range of the brochures that were produced by the Tourism Authority of Thailand, the newsletters uh, that came out providing regular information about what was going on. Of course, in those days, we had no emails, no Instagrams. Uh, so everything had to be printed and, and produced by hand and sent out to all the tour operators. Uh, that year, we were also very proud in 1987 to host one of the biggest conventions that was held that year. Uh, and, in 19, and, and, and in December that year, we also held the Royal Baj procession, uh, the Kanchanaburi, the, which is also known as uh, the Bridge Over Rural Choir, one of the most outstanding, uh, well-known uh, icons of the post of the post uh, of that war, World War II era. Uh, amazing number of festivals that were done. Uh, this was another uh, ad produced by the Tourism Authority of Thailand, showing the golden the, the barge procession. Uh, very, very symbolic. Very, very symbolic material. Uh, now, this campaign I want to mention because it was by Thai Airways International. Uh, one of the most eye-catching uh, campaigns uh, of, of that era. I mean, it really rocked this. It really rocked the system like you wouldn't believe. Uh, the, on the top, it showed Thailand, uh, and at the bottom, it I'm sorry. On the top, it showed every land, a supermarket there, and at the bottom, it showed a supermarket Thai style, which is a floating market where you can go off there and you don't have to go through all these stalls and 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 pull and push all those trolleys, but you can actually go and buy your fruits and vegetables straight from the from the from the vendors uh, in in the floating market of uh, uh, of, of Damnan Saduak and other places uh, in this country. And you can see the, what the, 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 the slogan said, the drab becomes delightful, the bland becomes beautiful, the mundane becomes magical, and the ordinary extraordinary. It was really an amazing campaign. And there were several slides that were used. One showed a beach on top, which was everyday land. The other one was a beach in Thailand. Then this one showed a greeting uh, in everyday land. And this one showed a greeting the th in Thailand, the Thai style. Uh, this one showed everyday land, a warehouse there, and how we move things using those uh, those forklift trucks. And this is how we move. Uh, 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 we don't use fork at that time. We don't use forklift trucks, but we use elephants uh, in Thailand. This was an ad that showed how people commute in everyday land and how we commute in Thailand. Uh, amazing work. I mean, this was just these uh, superb collaterals uh, done by Thai Airways International with the help of a, 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 an agency based in Australia. It was just an amazing amount of work that was done. So this basically just shows you can take a few screenshots of this. I'm going to I'm going to go through this quickly in order to save time, uh, but it will show you the impact of how it was recognized. Uh, this uh, this was a statement made by uh, Kun Thamanun Pachop, the, the, the governor of the Tourism Authority of, of Thailand at that time. He said, this is the beginning of Thailand's decade of tourism. Please take screenshots. You can explore these details uh, a little bit more in future. Uh, these were the key people who were behind it. Uh, General Prem, who was the prime minister at that time, the two actual brainchilds between them who developed the concept with the people on the, the two gentlemen on the left at the bottom, uh, Colonel Somchai, the, the then Tourism Authority of Thailand governor in 1986. Unfortunately, he was not able to see it through to 1987 because he retired that year. And Kun Prapan Sak, the, uh, the general manager of the visit of the Erawan Hotel at that time. Kun Chachai Bunya Anand, the gentleman on the right, who was the executive vice president of Thai Airways International at that time, uh, and the brainchild behind the advertising campaigns that I have just shown you. Uh, this was the whole Tourism Authority of Thailand team in 1987 itself. Uh, and I want to pay tribute, really pay tribute to all these hardworking people. There were an amazing number of people from the private sector at that time as well, uh, which I will not go into at this, uh, at this detail. 
Now, what was the actual impact in terms of what it did, how the benefits? And I'm going to give you 10 uh, areas in which there was a direct benefit. The first thing that happened was there was a boom in visitor arrivals. Again, please take a screenshot of this. You will see that all the 12 major markets that we were getting at that time, all of them boomed in double digit figures, except for two. India went down and Saudi Arabia was only up by, by 7%. Now, there was a, a bit of a tragedy with the Saudi market, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. But you can see the kind of growth that we had, 23.5% uh, overall that year, which was a phenomenal growth rate uh, for the industry. What it did was it catapulted the role of tourism in the overall economy. So in the old days, we uh, rice was our major agriculture, and of course, textile was developed, coming up as well, textile exports. And for the first time in 1987, tourism, the income, the economic impact of tourism overtook both rice as well as, uh, as, as well as textile exports. We had a phenomenal growth in the number of hotel rooms as a result of that because people started planning and they knew that the visitors would start coming. So there was a huge number of uh, growth in the number of visitors uh, in, the, in the hotel rooms. The number of participants in conventions, again, I showed you the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the slide on the Lions Forum. The number of participants, delegates in our conventions also went up quite spectacularly uh, or, uh, in that period. The TAT budget almost doubled. It went up quite phenomenally. This was in 1988. The government saw the impact of how, how, much, how, 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 how much good it was doing, and they raised that budget quite significantly. Now, this comes to a very, very important part, which is the global impact it had in terms of the brand. Now, you can see the slogan was copied all over the world. Uh, visit Korea here, they, used it, they have used it five times. Visit Malaysia here, they have used it four times. Visit Nepal here, they have used it three times. Visit Maldives here, they have used it three times. Visit Laos here, and this is also visit Laos here again, 2024, they have used that same slogan four times. Visit India here, they have done it two times. Visit Indonesia here, they have done it three times. Visit Vietnam here once, and a visit Viet Myanmar here once. There was a one visit China year and one visit Japan year. There was one visit Sri Lanka year and one visit Cambodia year. And again, this year is also visit, I think there is visit Phnom Penh or one other year, a similar year in Cambodia. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, but, it, but it was not just uh, individual countries, there were regional countries. This is visit South Pacific year. So the entire South Pacific islands also did the same thing in 1995. Then we had visit BIMSTEC year. BIMSTEC is, this, uh, is Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Indonesia, uh, sorry, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. They had one in 2000 and 2005, which is 20 years ago. Then we had visit ASEAN year in 1992, and another one in 1950 when we marked the 25th and the 50th anniversary of that. Now, all these visit years did exactly the same good for each individual region and country as visit Thailand year. There was a phenomenal increase in, 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 uh, uh, in, uh, 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 in hotel rooms, in investments, in jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, it really raised the whole thing up to a phenomenal level. And of course, in some cases, of course, it didn't work very well, like in India and Pakistan. Uh, we had a few issues over there and it didn't, things didn't quite go according to plan. In Thailand, a number of aviation changes took place. They developed a new airport, uh, a new airport terminal, which opened at the, at the end of that year. Then we had the merger between the two airlines, which of course opened up a lot of go, uh, global destinations. This was in 1988, directly as a result of this. Um, we had then what then became the fastest growing airline in the world because the flute, the, the root net, the fleet, the systems all suddenly grew, uh, doubled in, in number. Uh, we also saw a major uh, impact in terms of convention because in 1987, uh, with the impact of the convention, people saw the growth that was coming and we bid for the first time for the 1991 World Bank Convention. And in order to prepare for that, we developed the Queen Syracuse Convention Center uh, which of course led to a whole growth in the number of conventions that grew up directly as a result of the impetus created by Visit Thailand here. In terms of national planning, after 1987, it became very much part of the five-year development plans. Tourism became part of the economic structure that you saw. Uh, in terms of the distribution of income and development nationwide, 
the Japanese saw this was an opportunity to facilitate the growing of, uh, uh, of, the, of the Thai travel and tourism industry. And they pumped a lot of money into uh, into 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 tourism, and they, they with, through the OECF fund, which which revolution, revolutionized really the the the, the impact that uh, uh, that they had in terms of developing infrastructure uh, at the various uh, uh, domestic locations, museums, attractions, etc., which needed landscaping, toilet facilities, roads, garbage. Uh, these kind of things were all facilitated by the OECF funding, uh, which was given by the Japanese. We also, there was also a follow up in terms of the high profile celebrations that came in, visit arts and crafts here, and more royal events that followed, marking the 50, the 50 years of reign of, of, uh, of His Majesty the King, uh, and also the amazing Thailand year, uh, the follow up, which marked the 72nd birthday of His Majesty. There was a massive roads upgrade as a result of this. The Asian highway suddenly came into being. Uh, and of course, that is what you're seeing now, which is contributing very, very significantly uh, to the growth in, uh, uh, in the regional destinations. And what this road network did was, of course, it didn't just connect points in Thailand. It also connected the regional destinations. So you had the Mekong countries, the Indochina, Cambodia, uh, Laos, Cambodia, uh, and Vietnam, and now even going up all the way up into, uh, into, into, uh, into China. Uh, that road network is now uh, playing a major role in, in the interconnectivity that you see uh, across the board. Um, and finally, it was a global impact. This was the World Travel and Tourism Council, which came to being in 1991. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, well, actually in 1990, uh, when the world's multinational corporations, the Hyatts, the American Express, the Visa, saw that, boy, there's a lot of money in tourism and there's a lot of profit because certainly it became a big, huge branding issue. So this group got together and set up what was then known as the World Travel and Tourism Council. It still is. Uh, and of course, their agenda at that time was to remove all the bottlenecks, to cut down on visas, to promote investments, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, these were all the major benefits that came from that. And I just have a few minutes left, so I'm going to take you through some of the downsides. I have written the two books on tourism industry. And this was me uh, presenting a copy of this of my books to the then Prime Minister, uh, General Prem Tin Sulanun, at that, at, at that time. Now you can read these because it showed the, what exactly the benefits there. Just please take a screenshot and you can read these screen because I have a few minutes left and I'm gonna take you through the last few important slides on showing some of the downsides of what happened. Uh, now, the most important thing that it happened was that it developed a political, a sense of political unity for the country. Uh, we had, it, it, it got a, a public policy together. It brought in the private sector who began the cooperation and became a conduit for peace and progress right across the general, in the greater Mekong region. So it was a true partnership and a unifying force par excellence. Now for the other side of the story. The first thing that happened is that because it attracted so much money, it became politicized. There was a big bun fight. It became a gold rush. And as we know from experience, whenever something becomes a gold rush, we get all kinds of problems related to human nature, greed, corruption. Uh, there were all kinds of uh, issues that emerged, environmental problems, land grabs. It was quite a significant as people you know, began investing left, right, and center. The laws were not being enforced. The enforcement, uh, en a enforcement and carrying capacity studies were just basically ignored. It just created all kinds of problems. Uh, and of course, people were then began jockeying for power and fame and fortune, and the whole thing literally uh, it became literally a, a gold rush, which was probably not what was intended, but that's what happened. The other thing that happened with the private sector was that uh, the the equilibrium between uh, rates became suddenly you know the hotels jacked up their rates like crazy because they saw that you know with a twenty three percent growth the demand supply equilibrium became completely thrown out of kilter. And that, of course, created a whole bunch of different issues. We ran into manpower problems. It was quite significant because we didn't have suddenly to cope with the 23% growth. There wasn't enough qualified manpower supply problems, uh, manpower available, and we are still facing from some of those issues today. Uh, the aviation sector, uh, on the one hand, we the, the private sector began saying that, well, you know, you can see the benefits of allowing more airlines to come into the country. Uh, and the airlines at that time were saying, well, we, you know, we are not ready for open skies yet. 
So what you see happening today, the the, the dawn of the era with the with the uh, with the low uh, with the low uh, sorry the low cost airlines. Well, that bun fight actually began in the aftermath of the uh, uh, of the visit Thailand year. The environmental issues, of course, as I mentioned, just became a significant problem. Uh, there was again land grabs, rampant development on many beach areas, uh, zoning issues, uh, sewage, water, garbage disposal uh, created all kinds of problems. And I've included these are all from my books actually, because my books are designed to make sure that again I'm I'm not into storytelling. I'm history. Sto I'm history telling, which means you understand both the good and the bad side of what happened with Visit Thailand here. Uh, the warning at that time was actually studied, was also sounded by the Japanese themselves when they were de developing the first master plans uh, for Phuket at that time. They were already sounding the warning, so the writing was pretty much on the wall at that time. This was another negative impact that we had in 1988-89. Unfortunately, we, we had some, uh, some violence in this country uh, where uh, some two Saudi diplomats and a businessman got shot. And there were other uh, uh, some other problems that occurred in Saudi Arabia itself. Unfortunately, this occurred in 1988-89, which completely bottomed out the Saudi market. They 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 stopped all visitors coming here. They stopped flights. They threw out all the labor uh, Thai labor from the uh, from from Saudi Arabia. If it had not been for this, the impact of the post the post 1987 impact of visit Thailand year would have been even more phenomenal. Again, I have a separate lecture just on what happened uh, around that time. And unfortunately, we were back to square one because in 1990-91, we had another coup. And this was a democratically elected government. So we were literally went the full circle. We started off in 1985 with a coup. And in 1991, we were back to doing what we always do, which is throw out governments via military coups. So this is literally something that we need to learn from because clearly the 1987 had a huge impact but there were also some of the other side. This happened in 1997, uh, and of course, this was another problem with the with the with with the greed is good philosophy uh, that led to too much debt and uh, all kinds of real estate problems. And after which we had the 1987 crisis. Now, let me just end with a few conclusions. I want you to all take a screenshot of this and study this in detail because this is the definition of sustainability at its best. You will never see a def better def uh, a word, a definition of sustainability than the words of His Majesty, the King Rama the Ninth. Uh, this was quite an amazing, uh, and it just really holds true as much today. Uh, this was a message from Dr. Thanat Koman, uh, who was uh, the first chairman of the Tourism Authority of Thailand at that time. And he warned at that time, very well early, that you know if we don't just keep, if we just go for numbers, we are going to get all kinds of people who will come here for sex and drugs and alcohol, uh, and it's not going to be doing well. And if you see the paragraph at the bottom, he said, it's not worth the price. However, large revenues may be earned if the ensuing disaster threatens to strike a fatal blow against large numbers of people, we must heart, have the heart to prevent it from happening. So that quality versus quality uh, uh, ethos was already being marked uh, by our leaders at that time. Those people at that era, they had no interest in numbers. Uh, they were only worried about Thailand's reputation, which means preserve the quality of the product and you will get quality visitor arrivals. This was how basically I summarized it. Uh, it has been, a, 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 yes, we succeeded in many areas, but we also failed in many areas. And that is something uh, that we need to learn from as we go forward in this new era of, in this new era of tourism. Uh, there has never been an event like that. We need to be proud of our strengths in Thailand. Uh, all the other destinations around the world can learn from this. We need to recognize and address our weaknesses. We must learn the lessons of history and create a completely new model uh, as we go forward. Uh, I am now developing a whole series of courses on the history of Thai tourism in a much more broader, expanded form. And of course, if there are any universities that are interested in collaborating with me, I'll be more than happy to see how we can structure these modules uh, in order to learn the lessons. Uh, these will give you some idea of the kind of, uh, of, uh, of lectures that I'm giving and the topics uh, that I'm covering, the meetings industry, the Mekong sector. Uh, I'm also talk I have a special lecture just on the on our experience with beating the AIDS crisis, which is also quite a learning curve. Uh, from condoms to face masks, how we beat the AIDS crisis. Really, this was the original health pandemic long before COVID. 
but we beat that too. And again, uh, like I said, Thailand's been through many, many crises, but we have managed to recover and, and there's a learning experience uh, in all of them. Finally, uh, this next month is going to be uh, uh, women, uh, women's, uh, World Women's Day. Uh, uh, you, you will also be proud to know that, that we have 30 women in Thailand who have been pioneers uh, in the development of tourism. Uh, I have a special lecture just on this, and I will be delivering this uh, over Zoom also on the, uh, on the actual day itself. I think it's March the 8th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but please uh, stay tuned for this uh, in going forward um, over the next few days. Again, a final reminder, please respect intellectual property rights and reproduce with proper attribution uh, to this lecture. So once more, finally, thank you very much, Kun Ben, uh, Kun Noor, for your support and uh, this learning curve. I think it's something that we are all doing as a team for the benefit of future generations, for the young people, so that we, they may learn from our successes and failures. There is no country in the world that can share this experience better than, better than Thailand, which is what I call the greatest story in global tourism history. And I think we can all learn from that. So thank you very much indeed for the opportunity once more. And Nick, once more, thank you for, Limit, for all your IT help and to the entire Pata team. And once more, thank you to all you uh, young people who are out there listening. I don't know who you are. I can't see you. I've been talking to a blank screen here. Uh, but if uh, my, my email is up there on top, uh, if you want to write me uh, and have any further discussions with me, I'm available uh, at any time. So I'll be happy to uh, take a few questions. And thank you once more. And over to you, Nick Kapp. Sawadee Kapp, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, Kunim Tias, for such an engaging and informative lecture. So um, I uh, while you're going on with your lecture, um, it, you can check the chat uh, now, now that you're done with your lecture, you can check the chat. And we've seen a lot of students introduce themselves to us and uh, to the fellow audiences. And I've, I've seen students, uh, on top of students from Thailand, of course, I've seen students from the Philippines, Vietnam, Bangladesh, and uh, all over the world, actually, we've seen a lot of representation. And I do believe and um, completely agree that this lesson and this lecture, uh, there's key takeaways for uh, not just uh, Thai nationals, but also for students from other destinations as well. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, to start the panel discussion, of course, uh, let me welcome again Noor Parasio to introduce the panelists, uh, invite the panelists on screen, and moderate the panel discussion. Thank you, Nick. Uh, and of course, uh, thank you, uh, Brother Imtiaz, for I, I've never seen you speak so fast like a bullet train before. I know that 40 minutes uh, is short. And uh, you have so much uh, story and so much passion that you want to share with uh, all the viewers about uh, how the uh, visit Thailand year 1987 had gone through. I think uh, uh, for the benefit of the, the viewers, I think one important takeaway from uh, uh, Brother Imtia's uh, presentation is that because number one, he lived during that time. He was involved. Uh, with the not only with the tourism authority of Thailand as as a key player to drive uh, the visit Thailand year, but also the industry player at large. And also, I want to make a very quick uh, uh, note here uh, that most of our audience are I would assume they are below twenty years old, maximum twenty one years old. So that means when we talk about nineteen eighty seven, they are not born yet. So you know, and in fact. Uh, a very important note that we have to remind to, to, to remind ourselves, 1987 visit Thailand here. And only in 1989, two years later, this three-letter word come into, into play. The three-letter word is called WWW. Internet is basically invented and available to the masses, to the people all over the world in 1989. And by the time we get to the year 2000, Remember that you know we are scared about what going to happen with the computer going to crash or what have whatever. So I hope the younger generation understand that this tourism campaign done by Thailand is not the, the support of the media, social media, the internet that you have today. So in the, how amazing the success that was created by a destination uh, like Thailand. So thank you, uh, brother Imtiaz, uh, Kun Ben, and Kun Pop. Uh, for being part of the panel discussion. I, I wanted to do this more like a conversation and to the viewers, please feel free uh, to put up the, que the question in the, in the Q&A box underneath the screen because your question is more important than what I have in mind. Um, 
The scary part is that between Radha Intia, Kun Ben, Kun Pop, and myself, uh, I've calculated just now, we already have uh, more than 100 years, more than 100 years of joint experience in the tourism industry. That shows how old we are, like a dinosaur, right? So first thing first, um, we are living in this new generation, Generation Z, you know, and, and Generation Z love with all these uh, acronym, and then they have this acronym called WUKA, uh, Volatility, Uncertainty, Complexity, Ambiguity. In short, we live in a very confusing world compared to those 1980s or 1970s. Um, in that context, um, do you believe the lesson from the visit Thailand here just like I said, even before the internet uh, coming to play, are they relevant today? I will pose this question to Kun Ben first. Ladies must go first. Oh, good afternoon. Good morning uh, to uh, firstly uh, panelists and Kun Yim Ties, Kun No and, and, and uh, Pip Up, uh, uh, all the students all over the world. I am so very happy to, to be here. And um, detailed uh, students that meet me uh, are the younger generation said, uh, because my name is Ben Montgomery. I asked them to call me Auntie Ben. Why? Because I want to connect with you. I want to connect with everybody. And I think it is the job. It is our, our duty to connect uh, the old world and, uh, you know, the TV, the, um, the non, the Bunju World Wide Web with the world and that we work together. And uh, my personal um, will to have as many um, students, a younger generation to listen to this class. It's not that um, we are great. No, yes, the, old, the, the older generation uh, have done a great job with very little to before we can produce one picture or send our confirmed booking. You know, this is so um, time consuming, uh, need a lot of expertise. But nowadays, the kids with one phone, with the platform, you can enhance this job, you know, uh, on your own to promote your destination, promote yourself, promote your agenda. And I just want uh, the generation, uh, the younger generation to uh, keep the tourism in mind, keep your destination in mind and help us to promote sustainability tourism. You know, so that, that's what I, I, I think um, the younger kids can do much more. Yeah, with this inspiration. Yeah, thank you, Kunben. Thank you for the inspiring uh, words because you know you say that basically your answer is it is still relevant for us to learn about the experience from the visit Thailand here. But of course, uh, the, the the future generation need to use their new weapons, which is uh, the phone, the social media, uh, which, which they can do beyond what that has been done before the internet age, so to speak. Uh, I will still allow uh, Brother Imtiaz to, to take his breath after, after a quick presentation. Kun Pop, uh, thank you for joining us. I know that you have an international flight this evening. W what's your thought when you heard uh, uh, Brother Imtiaz's presentation? And do you think that the Visit Thailand here are very much alive until today? Well, that, first of all, that's part of the Tourism Authority of Thailand, TAT. I am flattered and Kun Yim Tears, you killed it. it. It was a wonderful, wonderful lecture. Thank you very much for sharing all the information. I don't know many of this. Thanks very much. Well, that Visit Thailand year was almost a fairy tale for me, except a few flaws, of course. But what I learned from Kun Yim Tears just now is that Thailand has gone through so many crises after crisis. And like what they say, you know, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And Thailand, I think, is stronger because of all the crises that we have been through. And, you know, tourism is no longer, it's not just about, you know, visiting in beautiful places and sharing your beautiful moments on Instagram or, you know, or Facebook or whatever. It is all about economy. It is all about employment. It is all about jobs. And, you know, that's why it is getting more and more important. 
and we got a, we have a lot to learn from from 1987 with the Thailand years. And I need the text. Thank you. I will be I'll be happy to I'll be happy to deliver it to the Tourism Authority of Thailand executives anytime you want, along with the part of Thailand chapter and the part of head office. I mean, we are a team here now. I think I think we really can take this agenda forward. Uh, given the response that we have got today, I think it's really been very encouraging. And uh, certainly we need to, we, we sh it, this shouldn't be uh, a one-off. And I think there's a lot we can share this as we as we develop, not just Thailand, but the entire region going forward. So thank you, Kunpo. And um, so uh, Brother MTS, you know, you, you sort of like open the can of worm to talk about the visit Thailand here and, and how, how great it is, uh, not just because you are based in Thailand, but, you know, as, as uh, as a critical minded journalist, you know you uh, you look at things in perspective, and and just like your presentation, you have all the paper cuttings. Th that's the living proof. You know we're not talking about me here. We're not here to just say uh, Thailand is a fantastic uh, destination and the campaign was great because we are here, but it, because this really happened. So, but but in that line, uh, brother Intias, do you, do you really believe that? You know, if Thailand were to do it again, is it relevant uh, even to have a, a visit tourism campaign here? Because you know, the, the younger generation possibly don't uh, want to read or follow a government website if they decide on a travel. Because the decision on travel are very much based on their feeling and social media. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you, you've asked an excellent question, really. And uh, I think the most important distinction that I can say, um, the reason why Visit Thailand Your Work is because we had a great king. Hmm. No ifs and buts about it. Anybody hmm. can do a marketing campaign, but nobody can unite a country. And it was a grand celebration built around the king didn't really have to do anything. And the, whole, the whole country united around that. So as the young generation goes forward, as we look at it, and when you look at it all around the world today, one of the biggest problems that we are facing all around the world is a crisis of leadership. Mm -hmm. A crisis of leadership. It doesn't matter in which country. And that's the issue right now that, that, the, that, that the young generation needs to really be most, most concerned about. Uh, uh, and what happened uh, that once you have, as I mentioned, it was all about meritorious leadership, ethical, mm -hmm. uh, beyond reproach, trustworthy, all the dynamics of a great leader. And it does not mean that that person has to be elected as long as the person has the integrity, the ethics, the morality, the trust of the people, that country will work. Mm -hmm. If that does not exist, nothing else will go down because all that happens is that you will, you know, you will just repeat the cycles of problems one after the other as everybody jockeys for position and power and money and, and influence and everything as it goes on. So really, uh, all these great campaigns begin from the top, from the top. You can throw as much money at a, at a marketing campaign as you want, but that will completely fall apart if, if, there, is another, uh, if there is another crisis on the streets uh, of any country. So this is something that we need to learn forward. And, and unfortunately, today, uh, at a global level, we, 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 we seriously have these issues. Having said that, tourism can actually play a role in creating that leadership. If you just see what, what, uh, what the Prime Minister of Thailand has just done now, today is the last day of, he's down in South Thailand on a, on a three-day visit, which is basically all about building cultures, building peace, building sustainability by bringing not just, and he's not, he's not there to talk about uh, to, uh, cutting back on plastic or reducing food waste. He's there actually building social cultural relations between the people. And mm -hmm. that's, what it, that's what tourism is all about, between building friendship and harmony and peace. And that's what he's doing there. The governor of the Tourism Authority of Thailand, Kuntapani, is with him right now. The minister is there with him right now. The minister of transport is there with him right now. This, this is what is happening. And this is how Thailand comes together. There's always this, this let's, let's look at things from a different perspective and work within what we have, but do something different. Uh, mm -hmm. and this is what prime ministers are supposed to do. Uh, lead from the front and see what what can we actually make uh, do from a from the from the from the cards that we have been that we are dealt with, 
And this is, again, it's something that Thailand tends to do very well, that uh, many parts of this country in the past have been have had all kinds of domestic problems, but they've always managed to come over this. And we did that in 1987 by raising the world's, uh, by raising the tourism industry to a enormous peak and pinnacle. The whole world, as I mentioned, nearly 100 countries all around the world. This, the ones that I showed were only in the region. Nearly 100 companies all around the world copied the brand image. You can imagine the impact that we had. So yes, there is a lot to learn. And again, I, I compliment all you, uh, all the people in Pata, uh, for particularly Ben, uh, for picking up on this uh, issue and saying, you know, let's see what we can actually convert this into a learning experience. We are not done yet. I think there's a lot, lot of work to go, a lot, lot of work to to be uh, to to, uh, to go forward on this, and certainly this partnership between the Thai, part of Thailand chapter, uh, between part of uh, the the mothership, as well as the Tourism Authority of Thailand, uh, can can make full use of my archives, my the documentation that I have, in terms of converting not just a crisis into an opportunity, but to make sure that the opportunities keep repeating themselves. We have one opportunity after the other instead of one crisis after the other. Okay. Thank you, uh, Brother Imtiaz. I think um, uh, one thing that I want to note is that uh, this is the first time ever that I moderated a webinar that we have more than 970 people, uh, 971 people. So a big applause to all the viewers all the students, the undergraduates uh, from, from all over the world joining us. You know, this couldn't be possible without your participation. You know, sometimes you have less than 15 people now. 900 is a huge number indeed. I'm also expecting that there will be a lot of questions. But as the first question that has just came in, I think it's very relevant in a sense that we, I mentioned earlier on that, you know, Visit Thailand Year was, was done before the internet age. So basically, a lot of uh, promotional material uh, being based on, you know, you, you need to print posters, you need to uh, print uh, brochures, you need to produce video, and video come in a VHS format, and these kids would not understand what is VHS in the first place. So the question is that, how did Visit Thailand program attract to get, uh, attract to get tourists more without internet and social media promotion like what possibly is happening now? Maybe... Uh, I will ask this question to Kun Pok first. Okay. Uh, well, I think what part of, of the reason why uh, the Visit Thailand year is very successful was because it was there at the right time. It was there before anyone else. And because, you know, it, it was there a long time ago, I think uh, advertising and PR was a very, very big issue. But, you know, at TAT, we always, you know, Keep in mind that there is a magic power whenever it is, you know, if you want to be successful in tourism promotion, you have to stick with this magic power. It is called partnership. Mm -hmm. This partnership is very important. And at THG, we work closely with, with the three strategic partners, like since 80s. And even now, you know, we stick with allies, we, we stick with uh, travel agents and cooperatives, and we give very important role to the media. And, you know, whenever it is, you know, Anything that we want to do, we stick with the partnership. We stick we we, we stick with the alliance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So partnership, uh, yes. and then you're doing uh, basically a hard hard way doing promotion those days, which is through trade shows, through promotion. You you have to go overseas and promote the destination yourself. Uh, then people start knowing Thailand because you know for for the for the information of the audience when we talk about before the internet age, you know uh, uh, I think in the eighties. Um, not only Thailand, a lot of destination in Asia are not well known yet to especially the long haul market like Europe and North America. So if you say, you know, Chiang Mai, people never heard of Chiang Mai maybe those days, you know, but today Chiang Mai is a popular place. You know, even all those uh, smaller cities are known. So Kun Ben, uh, I don't want to call you Auntie Ben because, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are different age. <laughs> but, you know, um, from the hotel layer point of view, and also as a Pata chairman uh, for yeah. Thailand, how do you see that you know, the power of and uh, that being being created for the visit Thailand year eighty seven compared to today? That one was the 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 pioneer. It's a very the very first in the world, right? Mm. And with great partnership, we are shouting the same message and proud it, you know, mm. and, and shout it, send the same message. And everybody 
working toward the same goal. We invite people to visit us for site inspection, uh, every, um, every advertisement, private sector, public sector, media, saying the same thing, deliver the same message. It made a great impact. So with now, what I would like to see, and Nick will tell you a little more, 966 uh, audience, the uh, students, please, attention. We're going to have a competition. We're going to have scholarship for you. Where are we going to fly you to Macau? Okay? And that you need to replicate uh, the, the passion of how to promote. But it's not Thailand anymore now. It's your very own destination. You know, by using the, the platform you have. A TikTok, the YouTube, uh, the Instagram. So Nick gonna come out a little later and ask you to come up uh, with your own promotion. And then we're gonna compete. And if you uh, win, you're gonna get ticket and hotels to join us in Macau. So, you know, this is to see whether our, uh, the 1987 inspire you enough or not for you to join us in person. Uh, okay? Yeah, thank so you, that, good that's good. me. Yeah, thank you, Kunbe, for inviting them to go to Macau. It sounds exciting. And in fact, I myself wanted to go to Macau as well. I hope that they allow me. But anyway, I think your first, the first word that you you, you mentioned just now, pioneer. I think uh, that, that must be clearly understood by our viewers because uh, in 1980s, when you do a campaign, if you are the first person that to start with a new campaign, that will be what they call the leader. Of, 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 of the products or a destination uh, like the Visit Thailand here. I think you put it in the right Can I answer that question as well, Ben? Uh, sorry, uh, Noor. I'm coming to you. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really glad he, he answered that. He asked that question, actually, because it was one of the points on my, which one of my slides, which I actually had to delete for, for time reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm glad somebody raised it because it's actually very, very relevant. Not, not Again, not many people know about this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bangkok, Bangkok is home to the largest largest club of foreign journalists in Asia. It's called the Foreign Correspondence Club of Thailand. And in the 1980s, all the big name brands of media were all based in Bangkok. They still are. Time Magazine, the International Herald Tribune, National Geographic, uh, you know, Business Week, Forbes, uh, uh, Asian Wall Street Journal. Uh, they, were, they were all based in Bangkok in the 1980s because the Vietnam War had ended. And all those people had got thrown out from Vietnam after the after the end of the war. And where could they move? Well, the best place for them to find the best bars in Bangkok was in, well, well sorry, the best bars in Asia was in Bangkok. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a factor. You know, the nightlife was great. The bars were wonderful. You know, we had a free press. So they all moved to Bangkok. And once they moved into Bangkok, they became the logical place to write about Thailand. Yeah. And Thailand had enormous free publicity because all the stories that used to appear all around the world would carry a dateline that said Bangkok. Even if the story was about Cambodia or Vietnam or Laos, this, the, the, it was being reported by the man or person, the woman uh, based in Bangkok. So that word Bangkok kept appearing on a daily basis for years. And we still have the largest correspondence club in Asia. Unfortunately, our travel industry doesn't make very good use of it. Uh, I, I, it's something that we are hoping to solve in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the weeks going forward. But certainly, it was one of the biggest advantages that we have had over the years, free publicity. Along with that, uh, of course, when the editors saw there was so much publicity coming out of it, the, many of the publishers, they also located their media reps here in Thailand. So mm -hmm. Thailand, Thai Airways International, that media campaign went to the people, the, 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 comp the publishers that were represented by the media reps based in Bangkok. So Time Magazine, Herald Tribune, all those major places attracted that advertising campaign created by Thai Airways International. And that year, I will tell you as a final, as a finale, Thai Airways International spent more money, more money advertising, marketing, and promotions than they spent on operations. Mm -hmm. Imagine what a phenomenal budget that was. Yes. And it's in my book. I have given the, all those figures in my book. They outspent everyone. It was a phenomenal amount. And it all went to those publications whose correspondence 
and media reps were based right here in Bangkok. Free publicity. An advantage that we have never actually taken great advantage of, but I hope uh, that we have taken opportunity from. But I hope to see that being addressed uh, as we go forward in the months ahead. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Brother Mkhas. There is a question online uh, already there, but I will I will post this question to you uh, after this uh, Mkhas because I think you should be answering that question. But for Kun Ben and Kun Pop, I have a different question. Uh, Kun Ben, you are with a hotel and resort. Kun Pop, you are with a tourism, uh, the NTO, um, the effect of visit time in here for your daily work today, how, how, how does it impact you? Does it make your life easier? Uh, does it uh, create a better environment? Uh, you know, when, when you're dealing with international people trying to lure them uh, to Thailand, whether you're working with a tour operator, with, with, with buyers from around the world. Uh, yes, yes, ladies first. Okay. <laughs> no, um, we because of that, those that that campaign, uh, we now um, how can I say, benefit and such an honor to be called the European and um and uh American market called traditional markets, you know, because they know us so much. We just have to uh retell them update them what's going on nowadays in Bangkok because uh, European, American, the, the, the conventional market, uh, they yeah. understand Thailand, the food, uh, the culture, and the climate. Start from that campaign visit Thailand 10 years. So mm -hmm. now our job is easier just to make sure that, no, you come back. This second time, third time, or your third generation kids is still coming. And also to tell the new generation with the new, uh, through the new platform, how wonderful Thailand is. And we evolve as well. Thailand not just uh, stick to uh, the old uh, product. We also improve. And many times we learn from our customer, say, we thought it's, it's common in Thailand, right? But in fact, it's not. Um, tourists love it. Visitors love it so much, like street food or the DIYs or activities that we do at home. Mm -hmm. People love to come and learn from us. Home mm -hmm. cooking, a uh, handcraft. Yeah. So all of this is um, it's just a little add-on. Mm -hmm. uh, so our job is easy. Yeah, yeah easier than them. <laughs> Thank you. There are already two questions online, so I will go to Kun Pop very quickly. And also for the interest of time, now it's three or seven, so we have a couple more minutes, so we need to answer very quickly. Kun Pop, how does this okay. make your life easier in promoting Thailand today or make it difficult? Well, uh, the, the success of Visit Thailand here would, you know, if we have to do it again, I'm, I'm doubtful if we, we should do it or not, because, you know, if the goal of the Visit year is to increase the number, we are doing good right now. We rise and we fall and we rise and we fall all the time. And, you know, you know, we have gone through so many. And, you know, at this moment, it is proven that come what may, Thailand can, can cope with it. So what I like to see from the visit year from now, this is not the number. I want to, I want to see, like, visit so-called sustainable tourism year to Thailand, something like that. Because we are talking oh, about yeah. we are talking about tourism for tomorrow. You know, much has been talked about tourism and sustainability, but less, very, very little have been done, particularly mm -hmm. through the, the government side. And I like to see that more than, you know, the increase of the numbers from recent year campaign. Yeah, thank you, Kun Pop. Yeah. Kun Imtias, the question on screen, uh, only two minutes I will allow you because you need to go like a bullet train. In what way did the Thailand Year program revolutionize global tourism? Actually, I, uh, no, I think that my entire lecture was just about that only. So I think if my lecture has been recorded, maybe the the person who asked that question could just go back and look at it again. Yeah, okay, great. Maybe maybe that that question can actually be answered by Kun Ben. I want to put Kun Ben on the spot because you're also a vice chair of the Thai Hotel Association, 1987, yes. 2024. Mm -hmm. What is the capacity of room for Thailand today? Just, just any number at the top of your head. Do you mean by capacity? Yeah, room room capacity. Hotel. Room capacity? Oh. Um, no, we Thailand has all range of um um accommodations 
of facilities to provide to you from first class down to economy, budget hotels, small boutique hotels, homestay, all to six, seven uh, star hotels and in everywhere. And ben, now ben, what we have 700,000 rooms in, in Thailand at the moment. Yeah. 700,000 rooms. Why? Um, I don't want to say it because it is on our way as well to legalize everybody. Mm. So yeah. this is when you say that uh, it is a hotel, then the government needs to take part. And this is on process that we are working on it. Right. Sure. So we but I am confident to say that in Thailand, we have complete range of um, services, products to provide for, for, for customer. But what we need to improve real quick, real quick is infrastructure to connect one city to another. We cannot do over marketing uh, than improving our product. We mm -hmm. try during COVID to promote second uh, destination. Uh, with the domestic market, it is okay when you have your own cars, you know, or connect by train. But it's not going to work to promote the second destination to oversee cl uh, clients when our cities are, are not well connected. So mm -hmm. that's what the government needs to come and 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 work harder and faster. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Ben. I think the the next question is is spot on for Kun Bok because he said we have seen the power of social media in destination campaign both positive and negative. If you look at the rumor stories in the Chinese social media last year, according to, the, to a BBC report, how do TAT react and prevent such viral rumors? It's not an easy one, but uh, please stop. Stop. It is up to be honest, you know, when there is like bad publicity, you know, if we could, if we know how to handle it, we do it. But most of the time we don't know how to, to handle it. We don't know how to control it. And you know, what we, always stick stick with is the lay low strategy you know one things happen you know tomorrow something new will happen and you know the old stuff would be flooded and would be would be taken out of the screen so well it is not a very good answer at the moment but to be honest you know, it is very difficult to deal with with what people think particularly you know all those consumers millions and millions of them you know they have like different you know ideas and different points of view and opinions so we can't just take care of, of we cannot just you know like take care of every single comment on, on 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 this but when it is like something that has to be taken into consideration that we we, we step into it hey, thank you Kunpa, because i think you voluntarily said the word or the, or the phrase to be honest because i think if if uh if agency like tat if you were being honest telling the people what's actually on the ground people would believe it you know, because you can't control the social media because today's social media is controlled by the user-generated content already. So, you know, you just say what you say. You're not trying to make it up because, you know, you're not trying to say that this destination is the safest destination in the world. Thailand is a Thailand. You, you come and you will get, you will enjoy Thailand as it is. So th there are two more questions that I hope that we can uh, try to answer. Um, public and private partnership. While travel and hotel bookings are moving more towards B2C, the mass tours have not bounced back. Tour operators are not bringing in the same number as before. Travel associations are losing out, uh, um, uh, losing clout among uh, government agencies. What can we all do to lift the profile tourism association so that government can see our importance? So I guess this will also go to uh, Kunbo. Ah, well, I think Kunbe would help me with, with this. Uh, yeah. the side. Sure. I, I can do that. I think, let, yeah, let me jump in. Uh, I think it's proved so um so well that during COVID crisis, without PATA, without THA, Thai Hotel Association, without ETA, you know, that we work together, voice out and work closely with the government, it took us through the crisis. And that's why Phuket Sandbox has formed up. It's because of public and private sector join hand and proposed and came up uh, uh, with the, the, the very good program and keep Phuket uh, uh, increase you know, back to even before COVID, uh, the fastest um, uh, back to recovering uh, to pre-COVID time. So I think this association, uh, you 
you can't work alone. I am mm -hmm. for Centara, right? I'm working for Centara. I walk to the government and say, I want this, I want this, this is uh, Centara. Who are you, you know? But if we, Centara, minor, do sit, we get together, uh, Suko Son Hotel, this is I'm talking about, Thai hotels, right? Uh, and then Marriott and everybody get together, join hand and uh, and go to okay. to um to the government come up and these work so well during the crisis and crisis mm -hmm. will always come back you have okay. to be friends during good time and bad time dear yeah okay thank you thank you kunban uh, if i if i may add on sure, to please who can send box thank you for mentioning this because who can send box was uh, uh actually was uh like uh, it's a proof that Thailand is resilient, and you know, in order to to survive the, the disaster of disaster or the crisis, you have to be resilient. And in order to be resilient, you have to be flexible. And you know, again, you know, it is a combined effort. If you want to survive the crisis, it, it is a combined effort between the government side and and you know the tourism sectors. Yeah, thank you, Kunpo. Uh, in the interest of time, we we actually one minute over the time, but I think I want just to. Um, give the opportunity to uh, Brother Imtiaz, Kun Ben, and Sukun Pop. Uh, one word. Think of one word that you want to express to the viewers, especially the, the younger generation, even though we also have the lecturers and also part-time members from the industry joining this webinar. One word for, the, for your advice for the future generation attending this event. Uh, what would it be? Engagement. Engagement. Partnership. Partnership. Redefine sustainability. That's two work. I said only one word, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Gratifying sustainability. Okay, we make it into one word. Okay. From me, I would say energy because this session is all about energy and energy that we have seen in 1987 can be remade even better by the younger generation. So yeah. on that note, I will pass back. I would like to thank uh, Brother Intias, Kun Ben, uh, Kun Pop, uh, Kung Kung Kap to all of you and to all the uh, audience. Uh, I couldn't be thankful enough for your for your, for you tuning us with us today. Back to Nick. Thank you to uh, Noor, our uh, moderator, and also to all of our panelists. And I believe um, our audiences might have uh, more questions to ask, but. Um, as uh, Kunim Tias has shared his email with um, with you guys, you, you guys can get connected to discuss further about um, his lectures, or uh, we'll, I'll be showing uh, later of uh, the contact that you can contact Pada as well and Pada Youth, so that you can be involved in such um, such discussions and also on youth activities that uh, other youth activities that you might be uh, interested in joining. So um, Ni, could you share your screen again? Um, before we end, I have very important announcements to make as we have a um, great lineup of in-person events this year uh, for PADA and PADA Youth that everyone here uh, might be interested in joining. So starting from, yep, uh, PADA International Conference and Women in Travel from March 20th to 22nd in happening in Boho, uh, Philippines. I know um, uh, while I was going through the chat, I saw a lot of students from uh, the Philippines uh, here with us today. So um, this would be a great opportunity for you as the registration is open to all and complimentary, uh, but you got to act quick because the registration is actually ending today uh, for complimentary and for all registrations. So you can stick, scan the QR code or simply visit PADA website, uh, PADA.org uh, PADA and visit our event page so that you can um, you can check out the registration details. So next slide, please. Next uh, lined up would be Para Annual Summit 2024 from May 15 to 17, happening at the Grand Lisboa Palace Resort, Macau, China. And of course, the event that all youth are looking forward to, Para Youth Symposium. So next slide, please. So Para Youth Symposium 2024, hosted by Macau University of Science and Technology, is happening alongside Para Annual Summit 2024, on May 16 in Macau. Uh, more importantly, with generous sponsorship from uh, 
Hara Thailand Chapter and Macau Institute for Tourism Studies. Hara Youth Sponsorship is available for Para Education Premium School students and Para Student Chapter members. So the sponsorship includes round trip airfare from uh, wherever you are to Macau, to from Macau, accommodation throughout the Para Annual Summit 2024, and registration for both Para Annual Summit 2024 and Youth Symposium. So uh, you can scan the QR code, the big QR code on the right side, uh, right hand side, and apply for sponsorship today. So as um, Auntie Ben mentioned, um, they, the application for sponsorship is not just you filling in your information, your name, email, but it, it involves creativity and you representing your own destination. So uh, suggested topics, um, some of the examples of su suggested topics include um, showcase your background and how you can represent your country or destination. Share your uh, any personal or academic experience to highlight your passion for, you know, uh, sustainable development of the tourism and travel industry. Share your vision about uh, the future of the industry and what you learned about, uh, learned from or key takeaways from this webinar on Visit Thailand Year 1987 and how you would like to replicate it and uh, in your own way to, uh, to represent and promote your own destinations as well. And um, on top of this, um, we also do have, uh, for those who missed out on this opportunity to apply for sponsorship, we also do have um, youth forum organized by Para Thailand chapter and uh, Bangkok University International uh, happening on March 18. Uh, it's uh, entitled Fast Forward, your career in tourism. So if you visit our Para Youth Symposium 2024 event page, you'll be able to get more information on sponsorship and also on upcoming event, uh, youth upcoming youth forum happening on March 18. It is happening on site uh, at Bangkok University, but it is also going to be live streamed. And we're going to have another opportunity for students to apply for sponsorship if they, uh, if they attend the live stream or attend the event on site and registration details will be uh, will be out uh, at least by next week and very soon so uh, please keep um, keep uh, posted and you know uh, stay tuned on our website for any registration and uh, for those who are not eligible for sponsorship because the sponsorship is only available for para education premium school students and PADA student chapter members. Don't worry, if you wanna join the PADA Youth Symposium, um, it is open to all and complimentary until April 30, 2024. So just visit the website, scan the QR code in the visual to visit the event page of PADA Youth Symposium uh, to register uh, as complimentary for all youth to join the PADA Youth Symposium in Macau. So if you want to interact with industry leaders, uh, just like uh, the industry leaders that we met today and engage with fellow future leaders of the tourism industry, uh, all the other 900 audiences that you're seeing uh, in the participant list, please scan the QR code. Again, please scan the QR code on the visual to visit the event page for more, uh, more details. Next slide, please. And we also do have Para Travel Mart 2024 happening in August in Bangkok to celebrate 25th anniversary of Para in Thailand. And next slide, please. The and Para Destination Marketing Forum is also happening in November in Cha'am Hachaburi, Thailand. So next slide, please. I think this is the last slide that I have. Last but not least, one important announcement is that after a long wait, Para is finally bringing back on-site on internship for Para internship program. So this will give you an, um, an opportunity to work at PADA headquarters office in Bangkok and experience on-site internship. So we have various departments where, uh, available for both on-site and remote internships. So as you can see on screen, you can see uh, various departments and teams that you can work for on-site or remote. Uh, and you also got to act quick on this application as well, because um, Quarter two, uh, period for quarter two, tw uh, 2024, which is for uh, for the period uh, that starts in April, the application is ending today. So scan the QR code individual, uh, learn more about our internship program and apply today. 
So I know that there were uh, there was a lot, there were a lot of QR codes that you needed needed to scan, but uh, you just have to simply uh, visit visit us at para.org so that you can check all the details on our website uh, on your own pace and on your own time. Next slide, please. Okay, so thank you so much to dear audiences for attending this webinar and special thanks to our guest speakers and also to Noor, our uh, Para CEO and the moderator for today. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact the Para Youth team through email at ytp at para.org. And you can also visit us at www.para.org to check out all the details uh, that was announced today about the event, about the sponsorship, and also about the internship program. So have a great one, everyone. Thank you all for joining and hope to see you guys again, uh, hopefully at our in-person events or the youth forum on March 18 or our future Para Youth webinars. So thank you again to all the speakers and all the audiences. So have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.